Hello and good morning. My name is Haley Canada. Thank you for your time. Audience, I am here to persuade you that animal shelters should only euthanize ill animals instead of the not adopted in time ones. Shelters should not euthanize animals if they are not adopted within a certain time span or when there is no more room left in the shelters. They should only euthanize the terminally ill animals. Today, I will discuss the problems with these shelters along with euthanasia, offer solutions to help you see how better no-kill shelters are, and persuade you that euthanasia should only be used on the very sick. Animals obtain many diseases in these shelters, are placed on a dated kill list, and forced to go through the awful process of euthanization. If you will turn your attention to the TV, you will see the three problems related to kill shelters and the use of euthanasia. Problem number one, many strays are picked up and automatically thrown into cages without any medical checkups. These street animals succumb to the environment, picking up many diseases and infections, then thrown directly into a cage. The diseases begin to spread as soon as they are thrown into a cage, and their health worsens with time. Number two, the waiting list for euthanizing. There is limited space in these shelters. And as soon as an animal is thrown into a shelter, they are placed on this list. If they are not adopted within a certain time limit, they are euthanized. The old and sick are placed at the top because they are less likely to get adopted. They are followed by the young and healthy who are more likely to get adopted. And number three, euthanasia is used on any shelter animals. The word euthanasia originated from Greece, meaning good death. In a study from GoldFly.com in 2021, 18,000 animals died in Mississippi, representing 27.3% of all shelter animals. The save rate for Mississippi at the time was 72.7% and was quoted worse than all but seven states in the United States. No animal should have to die to make room for others. Shelters also refuse a number of animals because of lack of room. There are many solutions to these problems. We can help save these strays by supporting and establishing them. Solution number one for strays with diseases. Shelters can be equipped to provide proper care and procedures for all street animals. All shelters should require vets. This will stop the diseases from spreading with checkups and vaccinations as well as proper medication for all sick animals. This will create a safer and healthier environment for all animals, leading to an easier adoption. The organization PETA stated in an article, thousands of animals born on streets, on the streets, adding more strays to the population. The solution to this would be the no-birth solution. Shelters spay and neuter all animals with the no-birth solution. If they are picked up, they automatically are spayed and neutered. This will cease breeding and production of more unwanted animals, decrease the number of strays entering the shelters, and decrease the rates of euthanasia. And the last solution would be outlawing the overuse of euthanasia and initiating no-kill shelters. A no-kill shelter desires to keep all strays healthy and alive. As stated in Jennifer Luchit's article, Thou Shalt Not Kill, these shelters are a movement that only euthanizes the non-rehabilitated animals. These animals are ones with a 0% chance of survival. For example, a dog that suffers from rabies but also has damage to the brain, or a cat that has multiple bone fractures that are unfixable. These are the mentally and physically ill. When a vet diagnoses an animal, as mentioned, while concluding the low survival rate, they might suggest euthanasia as a mercy treatment. While this, they use euthanasia as a mercy treatment, they can also provide spaying and neutering service, as I stated before. Shelter animals deserve a much better life than the one they had on these streets. By exercising better awareness of strays and giving them time and attention, the outcome will prove to be very beneficial. Less diseases in shelters. The use of vaccinations and proper medications in shelters will help any animal entering with or without diseases and help them be cared for. 
This will stop the spread of diseases and infections and keep all shelter animals happy and healthy, leading to faster adoptions. Animals no longer have to await death. All shelters, as well as animal control, can help with the stray population with the no-birth solution. Animal control might be patrolling one day and find strays that have not been spayed or neutered. With the right equipment, these organizations will be able to reduce the number of strays and unwanted animals on the streets. No-kill shelters can save thousands of lives. Alana Aragati voiced in her article, What are no-kill shelters and how do they work? That no-kill shelters do not kill animals for reasons of time and space. Meaning, no more innocent lives have to, be, have to face an irrational death. They are well equipped to take in any and all animals, will work hard to make each stray adoptable by vaccination, spaying and neutering services, as well as grooming. I have discussed multiple problems with kill shelters and the use of euthanasia, and I have offered solutions to each of the issues. I hope I have helped you see how no-kill shelters are better for the animal environment and persuaded you why shelters these shelters should not euthanize any more innocent lives. No animal should have to be euthanized if they are not adopted in time or to make room for other strays.